Okay, here we are again for another video, setting up higher away from the magnet. I want you to notice the specific angle of precession. It's uh, 42.5 degrees. As I give it a swing here in the direction of the centrifugal flow, or the divergent flow. Actually, I basically just let it fall. You notice it's speeding up on its own. I didn't even toss it. All I did was just let it drop in one direction. I know this isn't exactly all that exciting, but I wanted to show you the precession angle of a centrifugal and centripetal. There are better ways to show this precession angle, but not necessarily a better physical analog than this. Let's try it the other direction. Remember, I'm just dropping it. I'm not actually throwing it or anything. You notice I'm going the direction opposite of the flow. This time I went uh, counterclockwise. And the centrifugal is uh, clockwise. And the centripetal is counterclockwise. You notice the radical angle of precession as I was throwing it in the opposite direction to the where it wanted to flow center, uh, centrifugally which is in clockwise direction and I was tossing it counterclockwise. I should show that again really quick. Okay, do you see that? It's just being suspended by a tripod hook. There's nobody holding it up there. Once I let go of it, there's no human intervention. Nothing inside this black case either. It's empty. It's what's used to transport the magnet. A case inside of a case. Uh, this specific angle of precession is known by uh, magnetic uh, resonance imaging machine manufacturers and doctors. Uh, it's referred to in the book, Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism, however, they do not understand what it is, but they know the angle and the frequency of magnetic precession as uh, used in uh, MRI imaging. Although they have the angle slightly off, but I mean, there could be a variance depending on flux density and about a dozen other variables. So I just wanted to show you that really quickly. I'm sorry I took two videos, but uh, I should like to show you once again the radical. See, that was so radical there, it actually wrapped around the tripod leg. You just got to give it a gentle little drop in the wrong direction of where it wants to go centri centrifugally. And you'll see that. You see that pattern it creates? It does not want to go in that direction centrifugally. Now it's evening itself out centripetally or convergently. All magnetism, like I said, and uh, discussing and covering the missing secrets of magnetism, why any magnet wants to go to the dead center of a magnet, uh, completely opposite to why any iron ball wants to go to the outside edge or the centrifugal divergent edge, is extremely simplex, and yet you'll find no explanation for it anywhere. The reason is a magnet, like another magnet, is a electrified dielectric object, and an iron ball is not electrified. So what is being impulsed or magnetically induced, induced from an applied field in an iron ball it does not change its dielectric capacitance or change its magnetism. That is why the applied field of a standard magnetic induction to an iron ball always wants to seek the centrifugal outer perimeter and why any other magnet will always want to seek the dead center. Dielectricity terminates into gravity in stellar masses and in galactic masses with enormous power. We all know that electricity terminates into magnetism. We all know how to get electricity from magnetism. Now the real question is that I won't answer and someone might have created a device with a very weak anti-gravitational field. I won't say who that person is but Working retroductively using platonic methodology, if we know that electricity terminates into magnetism, and we know how to get electricity from magnetism, and using my special diagram as mentioned uh, in the book Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism, we know that dielectricity has a centripetal field, 
as does gravity. However, gravity accumulates spatially, i.e. due to mass, but its field is always centripetal, same as dielectricity. However, dielectricity does not accumulate spatially as electrical inertia, but it does as its stable form in mass as it is created in galactic forms and in stellar forms. So working retroductively, working backwards the same way you understand the creation of electricity through magnetism, you are able with special geometries to be able to understand how to manipulate the dielectric inertial plane to create an anti-gravitational effect. I hate even mentioning that because it is so fringe and unbelievable. I mean, it's the, the realm of quackery that uh, every pathetic nut job and uh, crystal rubbing, new age, free energy, over unity moron talks about on YouTube. And uh, they're all despicable and they've all got a screw loose and several ball bearings missing out of their brain casing, but even though their ideas are crazy, the logic behind it is perfectly sound because uh, Oliver Heaviside talks about it in his book, uh, first volume, Appendix A, Electromagnetic Theory. Charles Proteus Steinmetz talked about it. Nikola Tesla talked about it. So. Even though uh, it is the realm of quackery, as it has inva been invaded by them, uh, the principle itself is sound from the greatest minds who ever lived, and someone might have actually created a device with a very weak anti-gravitational effect. Let's try that again here. I hope this little video didn't bore you to death. I just wanted to talk about the... Uh, processional angles of a magnet on another magnet why it's 42.5 degrees that's uh, discussed in uh, with all the angles and uncovering the missing secrets of magnetism and how any magnet as it leaves the centrifugal is always one can seek the center the centripetal obviously the, st the string needs to unwind its tension so it will rewind backwards again but since the outer uh, centrifugal is moving in a clockwise fashion, once it does unwind, it will move how the centripetal wants to move, which is counterclockwise, as we showed in our TV demonstration. However, the centrifugal is moving. If it's moving clockwise, the centripetal is moving counterclockwise. If the centrifugal is moving counterclockwise, the centripetal convergent is moving clockwise. There is no exception to this. This is an absolute fact. One discovery in messing with this giant $800 beast of a magnet, uh, an unfortunate side effect is uh, too much experimentation with it as I'm being shot directly in the face by the centrifugal field flow is that uh, my eyes hurt within about an hour or so afterwards, if not sooner. So when I do experiments with it, I like to do it as little as possible now because it makes my face hurt and it makes my eyes hurt. And it makes perfect sense. I mean, you never hear about stuff like that from magnets because nobody's messing with a giant beast like this that has enormous volumes of magnetism pouring out of it. Anyway, I hope you watch this slightly boring yet hopefully informative section from... Uh, Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism, please email me with any questions or corrections or anything you want to say. Just don't make it pathetic and make it a ranting diatribe. I may at least have something intelligent to say. Although, thankfully, many of the comments have been extremely positive to date. There's always someone out there that has something awful to say, but that's the nature of YouTube, isn't it? We have to take the high road and deal with it, and uh, if someone has something logical to say in a rebuttal, then, then say it. Everybody should be a truth seeker. Uh, as is the nature of Platonism, to be proven right means you are close to the truth, and to be proven wrong means someone has corrected you, and you are therefore also closer to the truth. So, a genuine truth seeker likes to be proven both right, and he equally, actually greater so, likes to be proven wrong because both resultants brings one closer to the truth. Like I said, email me with any questions. I hope I showed to you, at least I gave you a decent analog of the precession angle of 42.5 degrees, which is half of 85 degrees, which is the remaining of the 137.5077 degree 
angle of interior precession vertically from the dielectric to the centrifugal. Uh, but uh, you can read about that boring stuff if you're interested in Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. It's a free download. And I hope you enjoy it. And uh, give me recommendations on any future videos if you have any. And I will certainly make them. Thank you.